albums one through five with all my beautiful work and then I'll do a few problems um, number six is the first one I'll start off with so let's jump up here do it on the board because a lot of people made a mistake on number six a couple mistakes that are pretty common uh, so first of all Buying a car as an investment and the car kept depreciating, important word, meaning it goes down in value by 11% per year, compounded quarterly, also important. Um, so those are some important things. So first of all, when you see quarterly, you got your principal. times 1 plus your interest rate over N, but if it's going down in value, you need negative, or you could make that a minus right there, um, 0.11. A lot of people put 0 0.011, which is not actually 11%, but instead 1.1%. Um, and it's raised to the 4T. Uh, and this, all you had to do was look at the difference in years from 2012 to 2020, and that would be eight years of growth. You do need the four down at the bottom and at the top uh, for it to work correctly. And now it's just asking how much it will be worth in 2020. So you type it all in all at once, and you get your answer of Clickety click, click, click. You get $6,852.26. That's a horrible investment. Um, if you got a number that was close to this, but not quite right, you probably round it. And we say in here you don't want to round until the very end, so you keep these numbers in your calculator. Multiply them out, don't round at all um, until the very end, and then you go two decimal places plus the money. And you want some word answers with the word problem is how much. Alright, so there's that one. Um, number seven, you may have a slightly different answer than I do. If you were a little bit off on here, I didn't just come out and say that I'd use the um, P times E to the RT, but I figured plutonium doesn't really wait for a certain amount of time to compound, so I figured it was continuous. If you have a slightly different amount of years, 10.42 or something, uh, you, that would be okay in this problem. I would be more clear on the test with what I wanted. To the back. Uh -huh. The next chunk of problems are the log ones where it says evaluate without a calculator. If I ask you to evaluate without a calculator, there is a relationship between the base and the number you're taking the log of. So, a lot of times for a problem like A, I would write log base 5 of 1 over 25. If you don't know what else to do, you can say equals x, and then you can change it from logarithmic form to exponential form and say 5 to the x equals 1 over 25. And then you say, well, I know 5 squared is 25, so if it made it go to the bottom, all that would do is say negative 2 makes it go to the denominator and x must be negative 2. That's a lot more work than sometimes you need. Sometimes you're going to see, okay, this is 5 to the negative 2, 5, log base 5 of 5 to the negative 2 is negative 2. A couple weird ones, um, radicals are 1 half power. That's something from Algebra 2 you're supposed to remember. Sometimes people forget.
and get that. And, and these other two are pretty straightforward. 2 to the 5th is 32, so log base 2 of 2 to the 5th is 5. Alright, so those are pretty straightforward. Then we get to the expanding and condensing. Like problem 9A. So if you look at 9A, Nine A. Use the properties to expand. And if you have a log base six in the problem, you will continue to have log base sixes. Okay? And then you just had to remember there's three rules. If you're multiplying, which all three of these up top are, you're gonna do log base six of 3 plus, multiplying turns into addition, log base 6 of x squared plus log base 6 of y. And then if it's in the bottom here, you know division inside a log turns into subtraction outside of log. Log base 6 of z. It's just that minus sign there is what took it down. Now there's only one more thing to do here, and that would be to bring this out front Put a big old 2 here. So your end answer, if you check the answer key, that's why there's a 2 there. Okay. Um, while we're here, problem 10 is writing it backwards to take something that's written out, say this problem, written out the long way, and condense it down. So here, if you see a number in front, you're trying to send them back up into the exponent. And you'll have log base 3 of x squared minus log base 3 of y to the fourth plus log base 3 of z to the fifth. So I sent all the exponents back up, and then I just have to check anything that's positive goes up top, anything that's negative goes in the bottom, and it condenses to a single logarithm. So usually I just do this before I start typing it, or filling it in. I just make a single logarithm, and then I decide what goes up top and what goes down in the bottom. The only thing that goes in the bottom is the one with the negative here, which would be y to the fourth. y to the fourth goes in the bottom. The other two both go up top. A lot of people want to throw this down with it, but that is a plus in front of it, so the z to the fifth goes up. That's how you kind of work your way to the answer in that one. All right, and then <clears throat> number 11, with this exponential problem, your goal in life is to get this guy by itself first. So 8 to the negative x minus 2, subtract 12 from both sides, you get 237. And now you have to answer the question, how do you undo an exponent with a base of 8? Well, good question, self. You do it with a log base 8, because the only thing that undoes exponents are logs. And if you pick the matching base, you save yourself time and worry, because a log base 8 of base 8 will end up killing it. And since our power property says I can bring that in front, and then log base 8 of 8 kills it, you're left with just a negative x minus 2 equals whatever weird number log base 8 of 237 is. I'm two steps from the end. I need to get x by itself. So I add 2 to the other side. And don't try to do anything weird with this 237 log base 8. Don't try to put a plus 2 in it. The plus 2 is just hanging out back. And then you'll take your answer for that and take the negative of it. Whatever answer you got, I'd probably type it in my calculator first, and then put a negative sign on it. And the answer to that was like negative 4.63. Zero. All right, so that's a, a few of them. Now, problem 15 was kind of weird. 
and 16. So these are the last two problems, and we'll do them here real quick. All right. Problem 15 is only weird because there's more than one natural log here. You cannot undo logs until they're condensed. So if there's minuses or pluses, you need to get those together. And this is the concept that was up in like 10A. So look at 10A for reference on what to start out doing. And what you should see is a minus sign. I can condense these two natural logs into a single natural log. I'm not really doing anything with the other side yet. So when I condense these two together, since it's a minus sign, I just make it a division problem. And any, the positive part goes up top, and the negative part goes on the bottom. See how there's only one natural log? And now, you ask yourself, self, yes, how do I undo natural log? And you undo a natural log by raising it to the exponent of the base. And since natural log is base e, both of these become the exponent of an e. And what's weird, it doesn't usually happen, is they both cancel out. Because there happen to be a natural log on both sides. It's kind of a rare thing. Now we're here, and you still have to know how to solve it. A little cross-multiplying fun. So you have x minus 2 on the left. And here, make sure that x goes to both pieces. And then you want to get it equal to 0, so you subtract x from both sides. So I have 4x, and I add 2 to both sides. And you have to be able to solve this equation. And you solve it by quadratic formula. And you get two answers. Yes, you do have to know how to do the quadratic formula because you're in pre calculus. Um, goes to the song Pop Goes the Weasel, if you've forgotten. Anyway, you get these two answers. Now, the problem with logs, and what you should have been checking on any problem with log, like number 14, any problem that starts with a log in it, you should see would I really be able to plug this answer into the original problem? So you take a negative 5.86 and imagine plugging it in here. What's the problem with that? It's not okay, because you can't take the log of a negative. Very similarly, this one's not okay. If none of the answers are okay, you say no solution. And you wonder why you just wasted your time. It's kind of sad. But sometimes one of them works and one of them doesn't. Um, anyway, now for the last problem. Uh, Margaret's younger brother, Herb, invested $16,000, an account that pays 4.25% 4, 4 weekly. So right away, you can read this and see that it's growing to $75,000. Herb is not a very smart investor. He's just trying to grow his money to buy a bunch of lottery tickets. Silly herd. All right, so you got your principal. You invest $16,000, and it's compounded weekly, 0.0425%. Weekly, there are 52 weeks in a year, so it's raised to the 52T. So that's kind of following the compound interest formula. And it says... <clears throat> how long, that's a good indication that you are looking for time in this question, how long until it grows to 75,000? And you can check by just solving this problem. It solves like any other problem we kind of do. Um, first thing you do is divide by 16,000. And you'll have on the left side 4.685. On the right side, you'll have whatever mess this is. 